Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast, inside the business, buzz, and brilliance of Black entrepreneurs. Here is your host, Dr. Francis Richards. What happens in Vegas goes all over the world on Black Entrepreneur Experience, episode number 164. If you want clarity about your life and or your business, you can schedule a one-on-one coaching session with me. You can send an email to fr at francisrichards.com. Thank you for joining us as we elevate the Black Entrepreneur Experience by interviewing CEOs, thought leaders, innovative thinkers, and Black entrepreneurs across the globe. I'm your host, Dr. Francis Richards. Imagine experiencing a cancer scare going from bankruptcy to securing a a multi-million dollar contract in eight months, becoming an empowerment coach, author of You Are Enough, speaker, and entrepreneur. Welcome, Harold LaFaw. Hey, good morning, Dr. Francis. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us on Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast. Why don't you fill in the gaps? Share with our audience, Harold, what you'd like us to know about you and your businesses. Dr. Francis, I became an entrepreneur, gosh, over 20 years ago. At the Yeah, over 20 years ago when I was 29, I started a business called La Fall Employment Agency. And for me, like so many entrepreneurs, when I started it, I had no idea what I was doing. As a kid growing up in Oakland, I grew up in the projects, and the only entrepreneurs that I ever saw were pharmaceutical entrepreneurs, <laughs> and not the legal kind. And but I always had this dream and desire of always having my own business. One of the things that I remember as a kid, every apartment we lived in, I would always make my closet into an office. So I'd have a little desk and chair, and I would pretend like I was a businessman. And so I always knew that that is what I wanted to do, but there wasn't a lot of support around it. So I took the road that most people travel. I um, ended up going to college, changed my major about four or five times, and ended up getting a job working in government for the local housing authority. And for my family and close friends, that looked like success to them. And for me, it didn't feel, I wasn't fulfilled. For me, what happened was, like so many people who are on a path where they don't feel fulfilled, I started accumulating things, hoping that that would fill this void that I was feeling. So I bought the house, I bought the car, and still I felt empty. And so what happened to me, which turned out to be a blessing in disguise, I got a new supervisor who just didn't like me. Everything I did, she just complained and she made my life really uncomfortable. But she was the kick and motivation that I needed to really begin to pursue my dreams. And so it was at that point I decided that I didn't want to just stay in a place where I was just getting along. One of the things that I heard from a lot of my colleagues at the housing authority was they were just looking forward to one day retiring. And I just couldn't live my life with that thought just, okay, I'm just going to exist and work until it's time to retire. I took a leap of faith at the age of 29. I got a second mortgage on my house for $25,000. And I started this business, the Fall Employment Agency. Had no experience in staffing, had no connections. And I guess idealistic like entrepreneurs have to be, and I just thought my business was going to blow up immediately. But eight months after I started the business, I ended up being bankrupt. My house went into foreclosure, my car got repossessed, and I had to really figure out what I was doing wrong. And one of the things that I was doing wrong is I was trying to do it all on my own. And the blessing for me was that I came across a woman who owned a staffing firm who became my mentor and really showed me all the things that I needed to know to turn the situation around. And because she had been there and had done it, she was able to give me some really clear guidance and steps that I needed to take. And eventually I ended up securing a multi-million dollar contract that landed me in the pages of Essence and Black Enterprise. And people were looking at me like, well, how did you do it? As if I had this magical something. But it really was a lot of hard work, perseverance, and learning. 
And one of the things that I think so many new entrepreneurs don't realize is that you can't do this alone. And, you know, it's been said that your network of folks that you are connected with really has a direct correlation with your network. That business ended up being uh, really successful. And then I ended up starting, I had that business for seven years and I ended up selling that business. And I became the founding president of another company in Atlanta, which is a social enterprise. And that business last year, I'm no longer associated with that business, but they now have our, last year they generated over 40 million in revenue. They're doing really well. And my latest business is called Good Living Now. And it really is a business that was birthed because of my own journey with cancer. About five years ago, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer at the age of 48. And that diagnosis really came as a surprise for me because I was in good health. I exercised regularly, ate well. And the only reason, and typically for men, your doctor typically won't test you give you that test until you're 50, but I mistakenly told my doctor that my dad had had prostate cancer because that's what I thought, but turned out he didn't have prostate cancer. He had an enlarged prostate. That mistake really saved my life because otherwise I would not have been tested until two years later. And so after that um, diagnosis, I was actually given a talk. The same week I was uh, got the results that I had cancer, I was giving a talk to a group of people at a nonprofit, and I was sharing with them that you know I had been recently diagnosed with cancer, and someone in the audience, there was a lady there who was an herbalist that told me about this natural herb that I'd never heard of, black seed oil, and she said it was something that she had recommended many of her clients who were diagnosed with cancer and other ailments, ailments she had recommended that they take, and she said that. They had had good results and outcomes from it. Even before I had my surgery for the cancer, I began to take it. She told me to take it three times a day, and I started taking it. And I started doing more research about it and learned that this a powerful herb that is grown in the Middle East, that it's good for your immune system, it kills cancer cells, it's good for blood pressure. It does all these things, and I'm like, why don't more people know about this? Long story short, here I am almost five years later, I'm cancer free, and still what I find is far too few people know about black seed oil. So I started this company, Good Living Now, to really get the word out to the masses that there are other alternatives that can complement or in addition to traditional medications that you can use to live better. And the mission of the company is really targeted toward folks that are 40 and older. Because as we get older, our body starts to go through things, oftentimes just based upon all of the accumulation of maybe not eating well or the stress that we have allowed to become normal, which has oftentimes weakened our immune system where it makes us susceptible to a lot of diseases and ailments. If someone's listening, Harold, and they're saying, I'd like to purchase some black seed oil, how would they purchase the black seed oil? They would go to our website, which is thegoodlivingnow.com, thegoodlivingnow.com. And we'll give that address again at the end of the show, but someone's listening and they may not be able to hear it all. So we want to give them that information. So thank you for that. Awesome. Thank you. Harold, what problem exists in the world today that you would like to solve? The biggest problem that exists that I have really committed my life to for at least the past four years is mindset, our belief system, and how so many of us have these self-limiting beliefs that have us playing small in the world. It also has us allowing stress to be normal in our lives. And so we deal with a lot of, live with a lot of fear that we never deal with. It results in us having different types of ailments, stress, and different types of health conditions that we don't have to, to have. Harold, I want you to talk to our audience because we are dealing with COVID-19. 
There's right. a lot of stress. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of uncertainties. Take the floor and share with our audience something that's going to inspire, motivate, and empower them. Well, you know what, Dr. Francis? Our immune system, when it's healthy, it can fight all types of illnesses and viruses. I mean, we encounter that all the time. And what's happened so very often when we're living in this climate of fear and stress, what it does is it's actually weakening our immune system, which makes us susceptible to the very thing that we are fearing. During this time where things are uncertain and there's so much confusion, I think it's so important to just practice stillness. Just be still, turn off some of the noise. I think we can become so enamored and consumed by all of this information. And the truth is nobody really knows what's happening and what's going on. And I think it's important that we during this time take time to to get still, to get clear, and to, to focus on what is important for us. I think for many of us, this is a perfect time for a reset, to rethink what it is that we want to do with our lives, to rethink what's important to us. I think it's really an alarm for all of us to get refocused on what's important. I think for so long we've been focusing on the wrong things in search of material things and titles and other folks' acceptance. I think this is a really good time to just get still, to get clear, and to figure out how can we fulfill our purpose while we're here. Harold, what are you most grateful for now in your life? Dr. Francis, I think one of the things that I'm most grateful for is that those times wanted to give up and I didn't. Something always, there was always a blessing on the other side. And I've been able to use my life and my experience, hopefully, to to be a light for other folks. And so I'm so grateful that I'm able to do what I do and share the lessons that I've learned in a very transparent manner, given the truth of sometimes I did want to give up. and Sometimes life did feel overwhelming, but I didn't. Being able to, to share my experience, to encourage others that you can get back up. You know, Les Brown says, when you fall down, fall backwards, because if you can look up, you can get up. And I so believe that. Yes, Les Brown is an amazing motivational speaker. His quotes and his style is just unbelievable. Yes. So, Harold, you talked about those times that you hit that bump in the road. How did you reset? For me, my first business, when I lost everything, I lost the house, the car, the file of bankruptcy. One of the things that I realized was that the only person and the only thing that was holding me back was me and the fears and the limitations that I had allowed to put myself in a box. When I started my first business, I used to be so afraid of speaking in public. I would not go to networking events. I wouldn't really talk about my business. And I had been procrastinating for probably about a year on signing up for Toastmasters because I wanted to get over that that fear that I had of public speaking. And so I procrastinated and procrastinated until I hit rock bottom. And when I hit rock bottom, I realized that I had to do things differently. So often we are wanting different results, but we're doing the same old thing. As difficult as it was for me to go to Toastmasters, like I said, I procrastinated for the longest. And finally, when I had nothing else to lose, I forced myself to go. And what I discovered is, and what we often discovered, it wasn't as bad as I thought. In fact, it was very transformative for me, and the folks that were there were kind of on the same level as I was, and it really helped to elevate my confidence to help build and promote my business. I think it's important that when we are in a life challenge or experience any kind of lack, that we look at the areas where we might be neglecting, where we know that it's something that may be holding us back and move toward the fear. And here's the thing that I've learned is that courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is, I'm afraid, but I'm going to do it anyway. One of my favorite movies of all times in play is The Wiz. You familiar with The Wiz? Yes. 
what I love about that, that the message is that you have the tin man who wanted a heart. You had the lion who wanted courage. You had Dorothy who wanted to get home. And you had the scarecrow who wanted a brain. And they were looking toward this wizard, thinking that he was the answer. And what they discovered is that everything that they needed, they already had. I think for many of us, it's come to that realization that everything that we need, we already have. And there may be tools and other information that we need to get so that we can go to another to the next level. But everything that you need, you already have. You just have to summon the courage to step out and move toward the dream as opposed to just looking at it from afar. Harold, who are your top two influencers in your life and what lessons did they teach you? But that's funny we were talking about Les Brown. When I was in college, ready to give up, I was watching PBS. This was over 30 years ago when Les Brown first hit the scene. And I saw this man who looked like he could be my father, talking about you got to be hungry, talking about never giving up, talking about your best is yet to come. And I was so enamored by this guy because I had never seen anybody that talked about, he talked about his struggles of being labeled educably disabled, and he talked about all the things that he had to go through. He inspired me so much, and it's funny because a couple months ago I had a chance to meet him. So he has definitely been one uh, person that has really influenced me greatly. And then the other person was my mother. My mother, as a little black boy, and I think so many black men can relate to this, when you're raised by a single mother, all you want to do is be able to take care of your mother. That is one of the reasons why I never gave up because I wanted to be in a position where my mother didn't have to worry about money. We grew up, I grew up on welfare, on food stamps, and living in public housing. And I saw the stress and the strain that my mother dealt with. And I, as a little boy, all I wanted to do was to be able to take care of my mother. So with Having that why, because I think so often you don't have a why for why you're doing what you're doing. You will give up and quit very easily because I had that why. My why was to be able to take care of my mother. That is what drove me past my fears, drove me past my insecurities, drove me past all my setbacks. So my mom really was, has been my greatest inspiration. It was we can learn from successful entrepreneurs like yourself or brands. Tell us a brand or a business that is dominating that you admire and why. Amazon. I remember when I wrote my first book. Oh, God, my first book came out in 2001. This little company called Amazon. And all at that time they did was they sold books. So you could sell your book on Amazon. And now when you look at what he's done with this company and branched off into so many directions, I think his model is great because so many entrepreneurs, when we start off, we want to do so many different things. His example, what he showed us is figure out where there is a need, master that, and then you add on these different kind of pipelines or these different products or different services. That model has really inspired me what they've done with Amazon. Harold, you talked about books that you have written. Share with us the books that you've written. My first book was called Brother CEO, A Business Success Guide for African American Men. And it's funny, the reason that I wrote that book back in 2001 was I was um, in Black Enterprise in 2001, the first time I was in that magazine. And at the time, I didn't know that they got the magazine in prisons. The magazine, when that uh, particular issue came out, I started getting all of these letters in the mail with these numbers on them. And they were from inmates of various prisons uh, across the country who had read my article and wanted to know how I did it. How did I go from living in public housing? My dad was in and out of jail, so it really wasn't in my life. How did I do it? I wrote that book for guys in prison because I knew I couldn't touch them or reach them. And that became the inspiration for that book, Brother CEO. Then my second book was, uh, it's called Living From Within, Getting to the Heart of True Happiness, Self-Acceptance, and Peace. 
Because one of the things that I discovered, I built my first business and we got up to $4 million in, in sale. I realized that what I had been taught to believe wasn't true. I thought that if I had the money, if I had the wealth, that it would make me happy. And that is not the truth. I wrote that book as I was trying to figure out, wait a minute, I thought if I had all these things, I would be happy. And so that was just my second book. And then my latest book is I Am Enough. And I wrote that book because even though I had experienced what some would call success, I built two multi-million dollar businesses, I always had this not feeling like I was enough, feeling at times like I was an imposter, feeling like something was going to happen that was going to end this success. What I've discovered is that so many people have have that feeling, a feeling that they are not worthy of success. They find themselves maybe reaching quote unquote success and sabotaging their success or cycling their success because they don't feel that they are worthy. And one of the things that there's this quote by James Baldwin that I love. James Baldwin says, your crown has already been bought and paid for. All you have to do is put it on. I really wrote that book to remind us all that we're worthy just as we are. We don't have to prove anything. We don't have to defend anything. We are worthy just as we are. And when we realize that we are able to walk into all the dreams and the desires that we have in our heart. What book are you reading now and why? I'm reading a book that I've read many, many times, Think and Grow Rich. I read it when back when I was in college. In fact, Dennis Kimber wrote Think and Grow Rich, A Black Choice. That was the first version that I read. But I'm reading that again because each time I read it, there's, all, there's these new gems that I discovered that I didn't notice before. And I think right now more than ever, when we, from all indications, are headed toward a possible recession, I think it's so important that we don't fall into that black and poverty mindset. It's important that we do all that we can to keep ourselves in a space of wealth and prosperity so that that we don't find ourselves going down a path that we don't want to be. If someone spent a day with you, Harold, what is something that we would learn and discover about you that we don't know? What I've learned through, gosh, over 30 years of being an entrepreneur and being a single parent myself, that I have to give myself to myself before I give myself away. So for me, every morning, I make sure that I take time just to to meditate. And I always write in, in my journal, gratitude journal, just some things that I'm grateful for, just to help center myself. Because I think too often we go out into the world not taking care of ourselves first. And so we go out into the world empty. And so we're triggered by all the things that are happening. But when we take the time, when I take the time to get still and focus every morning and just to remind myself of who I am and my purpose here and focus on the goals that I have set in front of me, the things that happen outside the world don't affect me as much. My, my quiet time is so important to me. So what's next for you? So really what's next for me is really getting the word out about the new product, the Black Seed Oil. Because I see so many of my friends and family, we're all getting older. And sometimes as we get older, we start to subscribe and accept certain conditions and limitations on our bodies and think that, oh, because I'm this age, I can't do that. Or because I'm this age, I can't have that. Really working to educate the masses. As you get older, you don't have to be limited with your ambitions and you don't have to be limited physically. There are things you can do to yet maintain your vitality. Give us three truths you've learned in life or business so far. Having gone through several ups and downs financially, one of the truths that I've learned is that trouble don't last all. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, after you have suffered a little while, God will restore and that's something that I've held on to throughout my, my adult life. 
Another thing that is true is that, as I said before, there's nothing that we have to prove. You are enough just as you are. And that, that probably was the, the most difficult lesson for me to learn and embrace, accepting the fact that, that I'm worthy just as I am, not based upon what's in my bank account, not based upon the square footage of my house, because I was fortunate. And sometimes people think when I say fortunate, but I was fortunate to have lost all those things at one point. And what I discovered is that I was still who I am without all of the trappings or all the things that most people define as success. And the third thing that, that I've learned is that everybody's my equal. Everyone's your equal. I think so often in our society, we put certain people on a pedestal and we put certain people down. But when you realize that everyone is your equal, that takes your ego out, that takes your fear out of other people because you realize that everybody is on their own journey and everybody is truly your equal. It allows you to walk into a room with confidence, even though you may only have five dollars in your account because you know no one is better, better than you and no one is less than you. You talked about finances, the ups and downs of finances, and a lot of people want to know how you financed your business. And you talked about at the beginning of the interview that you took out a mortgage on your home for your mm-hmm. first company. Would you recommend anyone doing that? Absolutely. Now, when I did it, my family and friends thought I was crazy. But one of the things that I have learned is that When you are an entrepreneur, not everyone is going to understand you if they have not been on this entrepreneurial path. They're not going to understand the risks that you take and the decisions that you make because they've not been there. One of the the, the things that I hear from aspiring entrepreneurs, because I coach entrepreneurs as well, is that they just want someone to fund their business idea. But no one's going to fund your business idea until you invest in yourself, whether it's through taking out a loan in your home or using your the money that you make on your current job to then reinvest in your business. You have to make that investment first before anyone will buy into your vision. Talk about the most memorable moment in life or business. The most gratifying moment for me in business and in life really was being able to fulfill my dream as a kid. And that was being able to buy my mother a house and buy her a car and allowing her not to have to worry about money. So for me, that has been the biggest thing for me. And then also in line with that was being, I guess, a role model for my family and friends to show them what's possible because they knew me when. They know me differently than others. Many of my family and close friends have taken the leap and started their own businesses. That's very gratifying to think that maybe I had a small part to play in them having a bigger vision for their lives. Carol, you mentioned you're a single father. Mm -hmm. Talk about fatherhood. My son's mom died when he was 10 months From that point on, it has been just he and I. I started my business, you know, and my son was, he was, oh gosh, he was maybe one. Yeah, he was about one. And for me, it has always been important as a single parent to have the flexibility and the freedom to be there for my son, to be able to take him to his tutoring appointments and his games. And I wouldn't be, have been able to, to, to do that if I had a regular nine to five. And so it has afforded me a lot of flexibility in terms of, of parenting. And one of the things that I wanted to demonstrate to my son is that you don't have to follow the path that others follow. And you don't have to do what I want you to do. My son, after six months in college, he decided that he didn't want to go to college. And I had to take my expectations of how I envision his life being and accept that 
he was on his path. And my son, at this point, he's written two books. He's a brilliant writer and a poet. And I have just learned to support his gifts and allow him to, to be who he is going to be. We'll have to get him on the show. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He, I always tell him and other people, he's a much better writer than I am. <laughs> How do you feel about who you have become? I'm at a place where I'm, I'm happy about who I am becoming. For most of my life, again, in spite of all of the accolades or success I had, I always struggled with low self-esteem and a lack of confidence because growing up, I wasn't a great student. Even though I went to college, I got a bachelor's, and I ended up also getting a master's. I was I struggled. My first year of college, I was on academic probation the whole year just because the public school I went to, they had us... Rather than read books, we were listening to books on tape, and it wasn't a robust academic thing. And I'm and I, not even to blame them. I just wasn't there because of some of the trauma that I had experienced as a kid. I would go to school and just kind of tune out. I'm proud that I have been able to not allow the trauma that I experienced as a kid to define who I am now and now that I finally understand my worth and realize my value and that what happened to me as a kid did, doesn't and didn't define me. What is the hope for your generation? I think for my generation, many of us are parents and grandparents. And I think that what our children and our grandchildren are teaching us is that the systems and the ideologies that we try to pass on to them, they are not accepting and they are rejecting because they have looked at so many of us and looked at our lives and realized that, wait a minute, you're telling me to go down this route and you don't even look like you're happy. You don't look like you're fulfilled. And so I think our children and our grandchildren are teaching us to rethink what we thought we believed. Talk about maintaining a healthy lifestyle. What advice would you give? You got to put yourself first. I think so often we are trying to save everyone else and we're not doing a great job of saving ourselves. And I think that many times stress has become so normal to us that we don't even realize how detrimental the stress that we've been living is and how it's affecting our overall well-being, whether it's our mental health or our physical health. So I think it's so important that we put ourselves first and take care of ourselves. Self-love is so important. It's not egotistical. It's not selfish. Because if you don't take care of yourself, you won't have anything to help anyone else with. I agree. And I always say self-care is self-love. Yes, Absolutely. Share your favorite healthy food or meal. Well, I love juicing. So I'm a juicer. So I experiment with all types of juices. And I, I always say I'm vegan-ish. I'm not a complete vegan. But one of the things that after I was diagnosed with, with cancer, I just realized and discovered how so much of the food that I used to like, like dairy and meat, how there is a high correlation with diseases. So I stay away from those things. What is the one thing we can do right now, Harold, to support your business? Well, I would encourage you just to visit our website. We have a lot of free downloads from my, my book, I Am Enough, that there's the first seven days is on there. And go look and see if there are any resources that you might be able to utilize. We also have a course if you're looking to start your own business and write your uh, business plan. We have a course on how to write your business plan in 30 days. So there's just a lot of different free resources there that can help you possibly move forward positively. And how do you include your personal life, family life with your business life? They've all become like one. <laughs> there's almost no separation. And I don't have a I embrace that because what I do, I love doing what I've been called to do. It, it's all kind of connected. My business doesn't feel like work. And Harold, what can you do daily to be better? I think gratitude is so important. 
I think gratitude puts you in a space of abundance and it puts you in a, a space of appreciation. I think when you're in a place and space of gratitude, you just see things differently. And I think starting out in gratitude is so important. And I think that also doing something physically every day just to get your body moving it is so important, whether it's walking, doing some kind of physical exercise is important to dealing with the stress that everybody is facing. And what is your favorite exercise? I like to lift weights. And particularly as I get older and I try to stay leaner, I find that lifting weights, building muscle helps me to stay leaner. Carol, if you conducted this interview, what is the one question that you would have asked yourself? I want you to ask the question and answer it. Why do you do what you do? The reason I do what I do is because for most of my life, I live my life afraid. I live my life in fear. And now that I discovered who I am and whose I am, I no longer live that way. And I'm able to live a life that truly reflects who I am. And how did you discover that? It's been a journey. It's been... What I really believe that everything happens for me and not to me. Sometimes we, for many years, I I played the victim and I felt like going up where I grew up, dad and out of prison being on welfare, I felt like those things were happening to me. But what I now realize, everything that I've experienced, even the cancer, even the financial devastation, all that was working for me. And now I'm able to stand on that and not allowing it to define me. And I get a chance to write a new chapter where I'm able to redefine it and using those experiences to encourage and uplift others because I understand. Carol, we've come to the part of our interview. It's called Fun Facts Lightning Round. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. I'd like you to give me very quick answers. If there's something you desire not to answer, Feel free to say pass. Okay. Are you ready for the fun facts lightning round? I think I am. (laughs) The last movie you saw? It wasn't a movie, but I watched the the story of Madam C.J. Walker, but that was like a series. You relax doing what? Reading. Your favorite singer or rapper? Anita Baker. Your favorite dance song? Anything but Beyonce. What food you eat every week, no matter what? I eat cashews every week, no matter what. Your favorite month? June, which is my birthday. Hit the gym or hit the couch? All hit the gym. Why don't you share with our audience, Harold, what is the best way for our audience to connect with you and support your business? You don't have to rush through that. Give us all your social media handles and how we can do business with you. Uh, my website is thegoodlivingnow.com. You can find me on Instagram at Harold LaFall. I'm on Twitter at Harold LaFall1, the number one, and Facebook, Harold LaFall. And then my company Facebook page is Good Living Now on Facebook. Carol, we want to thank you for spending time with us on Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast. That is a wrap. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening and subscribing to Black Entrepreneur Experience. We would love for you to leave a review and rating on iTunes and share with your friends. For show notes and more episodes, go to www.beepodcast.com. Join us next Wednesday and remember, green is the new black. So keep your bank accounts and your business in the black.